Hello, you're watching a TVP World's a Midday Report. I'm your host, Diana Skaya. The SpaceX Dragon capsule with the Axiom Mission 4 crew aboard successfully docked with the International Space Station. The crew's arrival at the ISS marks the beginning of their 14-day mission on the orbiting laboratory. Precisely, and there you see... Now, the Axiom Mission 4 team includes Polish astronaut Sławo Szuznanski Wisniewski, as well as Hungarian Tibor Kapu, Indian Shuban Shukla, and American Peggy Whitson, who is the mission's commander. For Poland, India, and Hungary, this is their second human space flight, representing a return for each of the nations after over 40 years. As part of the Polish space mission to the ISS, named Ignis, meaning fire in Latin, Uznanski Wisniewski will perform 13 scientific experiments. Selected from a pool of 247 candidates in the Hungarian to orbit program, Tibor Kapu is representing Hungary on Axiom's AX4 mission alongside Polish astronaut Sławosz Uznanski Wisniewski. Both are serving as mission specialists. A mechanical engineer by vocation with a specialization in polymer technology, throughout his career Kapu contributed to the pharmaceutical and logistical industry and worked on hybrid car battery development. In preparation for the Axiom Mission 4, Kapu's training included flying aircraft as well as physical and mental endurance tests. His studies covered space engineering, space health and space flight history. Like his Polish counterpart, Kapu will also conduct scientific experiments aboard the International Space Station. European Union leaders are discussing exactly how to ramp up defense spending, deal with a potential trade war with the U.S., and work towards Ukraine joining the bloc. Now, they're meeting in Brussels, fresh off the heels of a meeting of NATO leaders in The Hague on Wednesday. Our correspondent Alex Kadzie was there in The Hague and is now in Brussels for us. Hello, Alex. So what can we expect from the EU today? Good afternoon, Diana. Well, it's very much a continuation of what we've seen in The Hague in the last couple of days. Those leaders agreeing to spend 5% of their GDP on defence. Now, to give our viewers a sense of history, that is, for some of them, more than they've spent since the Second World War, for others since the Cold War. And, of course, one of the purposes of this meeting now of European Union leaders is to figure out where to get the money and how to spend it. Two big programmes from the European Union there, 150 billion euro fund made available for loans to EU member states and Ukraine for joint procurement of weaponry as well as uh, what, we, what they call an escape clause which allows the member states to borrow a lot more money and not be punished by European debt rules if they spend it on defence. Now all of that being discussed behind the scenes this is seen very much as a coordinating meeting for these EU leaders. We don't expect a huge announcement off the back of this but just uh, the work of government going on in the background officials trying to figure out exactly how these things work. Now, I've seen a draft version of uh, the conclusions we expect the leaders to adopt later today. That was leaked uh, from my sources. There are two parts of it. One is defense spending, trade, all of the things we expect from European Union leaders. The other, of course, is Ukraine. And that involves a debate within the European Union about Ukraine's membership of the EU. Most member states are supportive. And in the communique, it says that they reaffirm, we reaffirm uh, support for Ukraine's accession process to the EU and encourages the opening of negotiations if conditions allow. The expectation here is that at least one member state, Hungary, will not sign up to that statement. Viktor Orban was here this morning. This is what he had to say about Ukraine's membership. The problem is the war. If we, integrate, if we would integrate Ukraine into the European Union, we would integrate the war. And we would not like to be together in one community with a country who is in war and represent an imminent danger on us. Because if a member of the European Union is in war, it means that European Union is war, and we don't like it. Now, Viktor Orban there remains an outlier among EU leaders. Broad support for Ukraine's accession program uh, process and membership of the EU remains within those leaders here in Brussels. But nevertheless, there will be, perhaps further down the line, a fight between Viktor Orban, other more Ukraine-skeptic leaders in the European Union, and uh, the rest of the leaders for now 
They're just negotiating, Diana. An interesting choice of words uh, which Orban used uh, uh, as an Im imminent uh, danger. Thank you so much, uh, Alex Kadzie, coming to us live from Brussels. The Latvian Prime Minister spoke to the media at the NATO summit in The Hague, calling for imposing further sanctions on Russia as a ceasefire has not been achieved yet. She also added that Latvia is fully committed to imposing more sanctions on the Kremlin. As Latvia, as Baltic states, we are very committed to further sanctions against Russia and as well Belarus because for us it's very important uh, to keep uh, Russia out of financial resources. And sanctions is a very effective way as well as shadow of it. I believe we have been willing to have a ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine for a very long time. Unfortunately, I don't see any patterns from uh, Russia wishing to have really a ceasefire. Uh, they are demonstrating uh, only force and uh, there has been a next bombing in Ukraine and in, even in Kiev and uh, uh, there is a violence against innocent people. So sure, for us, uh, it's important that we keep this uh, topic of war in uh, Ukraine uh, very high because for us as Baltic states, uh, we are a border country with Russia and Belarus. Uh, war in Ukraine uh, keeps our people in a very serious threat. But not only our people, as well as Ukrainian people who have has not breached any rules. So therefore, yes, we call for a ceasefire, but if not ceasefire is reached, we need to go further with next sanctions package against uh, Russia, because uh, with uh, tankers and shadow fleets, they can deliver more oil to Russia, but we cannot allow it, and we need to show our political will against that. Lithuania is in favor of inviting non-European allies into the continent's procurement of defense equipment, announced the country's president, Hitanas Nauseda, ahead of an EU summit in Brussels. Also, uh, very important to keep transatlantic bond with our uh, biggest ally, United States. So my country is in favor of inviting our like-minded countries, third countries, not non-European Union mem member countries, in the procurement uh, schemes of uh, defense equipment. And I think this is very important to keep this transatlantic bond through this critical period of uh, different challenges. Poland's parliament has approved a bill to withdraw from the Ottawa Convention the international treaty banning the use of stockpiling of anti-personnel landmines. The legislation received broad cross-party backing and now moves to the Senate for consideration. Introduced by the government in May, the legislation was backed by 413 MPs, with only 15 voting against. Before the vote, Poland's Defense Minister Władysław Kosiniak-Kamysz said the move was essential for national and regional security, citing backing from the Baltic states and Finland. The Ottawa Convention, adopted in 1997 and ratified by Poland in 2012, prohibits the use, production and transfer of anti-personnel mines. Last Thursday, to discontent of many human rights groups, the Finnish parliament voted to withdraw from the Ottawa Convention following similar decisions by the Baltic states. The European Commission will set up a pact for the EU's eastern border regions. It will be chiefly aimed at economic development and defense of the eastern flank of the bloc. The initiative was announced by Rafael Fito, the Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms, during a visit to Białowieża near the Polish-Belarusian border. The talks are attended by representatives of countries bordering Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. Regional authorities have called for special provisions in the EU budget that take into account their problems and challenges. These include the building of border fortifications needed to counteract weaponized illegal migration. The details of their pact are not yet known. The Kremlin has confirmed that Russian President Vladimir Putin will not attend the upcoming BRICS summit in Brazil this July. The decision follows the arrest warrant issued for him by the International Criminal Court. Putin's foreign policy advisers stated that the Brazilian government was unable to take a clear position that would allow the Russian president to attend the summit.
Moscow will instead send the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to Brazil. The International Criminal Court deems Putin a war criminal, as he stands accused of deporting hundreds of children from Ukraine. The warrant for his arrest was issued in 2023. Russia denies allegations of war crimes and the Kremlin has dismissed the warrant as null and void. This is not the first time Putin will miss a BRICS summit due to the ICC warrant. In 2023, he did not attend the meeting held in South Africa, as the host country is a signatory of the Rome Statute. However, in 2024, the summit was held in Mongolia, also an ICC member state, where a red carpet was rolled out to greet the Russian president. The BRICS group serves as a political and diplomatic coordination forum for countries from the Global South and Russia. The Belarusian opposition to autocratic leader Alexander Lukashenko has sounded the alarm as the output of potatoes is plummeting following price control imposed in 2022. Now, coupled to an increase of exports of the crop to Russia, the country is facing a shortage for its domestic market. Lukashenko introduced price controls in an effort to combat rising prices on certain staples, including potatoes. It also encouraged civilians to snitch on shops that are ignoring the price caps. According to a report by Politico, opposition figures warn the measure has made potato cultivation less profitable, resulting in a sharp decrease of production. Between 2023 and 2024, production already fell by 25%. Additionally, Minsk last month decided to increase exports of potatoes to neighboring Russia with Moscow seeking to offset its own dropping food production as a result of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Belarus is one of the largest consumers of potatoes per capita in the world. Bulgaria's opposition leader Kirill Petkov has stepped down from both his party and parliament amid a growing corruption scandal. Party members in Sofia are accused of arranging public contracts for selected individuals. That same day, Sofia, Sofia Mayor Nikolai Berbatov also resigned, and he was reportedly caught on tape discussing project approvals for companies now under police investigation, along with other figures linked to Petkov's party. I am taking political responsibility for the failure in the selection of personnel in Sofia. I am resigning as co-chairman and a member of parliament from We Continue the Change because I want to say that the cause of We Continue the Change is bigger than any one of us. I want to apologize to our voters that I allowed this personal mistake. I want to say that in these four years I have never betrayed them, I have never acted out of self-interest or fear. I have always worked with their best interests in mind and in what I believed was for their well-being. Ukrainian writer Victoria Amelina has posthumously received the Orwell Prize for her book Looking at Women, Looking at War. The jury said the work offers a powerful and unforgettable portrayal of the human cost of war. Victoria Amelina is among the 208 Ukrainian artists who have been killed by Russia since 2022. After the beginning of the full-scale invasion, Amelina took up work as a war crime researcher. In late June 2023, Amelina was in downtown Kramatorsk with a delegation of Colombian writers and journalists when two missiles struck their location. She died on July 1st after succumbing to wounds sustained in the attack, which also killed 12 other people and wounded 60 more. At the time of her death, the manuscript for the book remained incomplete, so a group of her closest friends took the responsibility of finalizing it for public while striving to minimize editorial intervention to preserve the integrity and authenticity of her voice. And now we are moving to the International Space Station as the Axiom Mission 4 carrying a Polish astronaut on board is about to be greeted by NASA's expedition crew. And we end this new service with this out of this world view. We are go for hatch opening is what you have just heard. If you are just now joining us, you are tuned into live coverage of the arrival of Axiom Mission 4, the International Space Station.